All right, guys, my name's Alex, aka Malex, and I'm here to talk about the sub pack and how you can use it to make some devastating little bases. Um, I've been using this thing for the last couple of months now, and it's it's really changed the way that I'm working. Um, I've used subs for a number of years now, and it's always been really helpful to just just hear and particularly feel those kind of frequencies. It's great to uh, it's great for writing and it's great for mixing. I like it for writing because you kind of get a vibe, um, <clears throat> you can sort of get into the music a bit more, get excited about what you're working on. Uh, and for mixing, of course, you kind of you need to know how uh, how clean and how clear that sub's going to be. Because uh, sometimes with the kind of basses I make, the sort of more neuro influence stuff, you can end up with um, things getting just a bit messy down there, and and sometimes that lacks the sort of effect that you need. So the sub packs really open up my eyes to what you can what you can actually achieve down there. Because um, when you actually have that physical feeling, it it really changes things. And um, basically, we're going to look at how how we can use that. I'm sitting here with it on my back and we're going to have a look at this base and see how we can increase the impact of the sub and make sure that that's the key focus of what we've got here. So I've just started a little patching operator as you can see here. It's quite a simple thing. I'm just going to turn this off for now because I'll explain that in a minute. But basically what we've got is a couple of sine waves here and uh, I've got it in this routing mode here where you see the yellow and the blue, which is A and C, are coming straight out the speakers. And then the green and orange, B and D, are going to be in FM mode. We're not using them just yet, but we'll, we'll start to add them a bit later. So all I've done is just taken these two sine waves and I've detuned them, one down a little bit and one up a little bit, and that gives us this. So you can hear we've got some nice throbbing sort of detuning movement. The only other thing I've got is a pitch envelope here, which is another important feature of pretty much all the bass that I make. It's kind of um, it's kind of something that just happens at the start of the sound. So if you've got it there on every sound, you've you've always got the option to use it. If you don't if you don't put it on, then um, you know you don't have that option basically. But what this is doing is just a, a forty eight semitone peak. You can see it drops down there, and it's giving us a little bit of a punch. And we can set exactly how much with the percentage here. Now, the next step for me here was to set up this multiband dynamics. Now, there's a number of different um, plugins you can use to do similar things to what I've done here. It's basically using it like a multiband transient shaper. Um, and this is good for particularly using the sub pack because I can, uh, can feel the extra motion in the bass. So you'll see kind of what it's doing if you look at the visualizer here. So where the yellow line is uh, and where the orange line goes above it, that's how much we're increasing the level. So it's basically upward compression, or it's kind of transient shaping in a way. Uh, it depends how you set the sort of attack and release times. Uh, and I've been using this a lot more in this kind of way, or using transient shapers with the sub pack, because I'm realizing that some of the impact in that low end can really sort of hit you in the chest and um, be really effective basically in adding sort of groove to the tracks um, whereas before I'd often be actually pulling these down and compressing it to kind of get a more consistent level sometimes it's better to have more movement in the sub because when it comes to being on a loud system in a big club or a big festival that kind of motion is going to really increase the groove of the track and you know a lot of the the danceability can be in the sub it's um to really, it's almost the most important factor in the in the track, besides maybe the drums. So let's look at making this bass a little bit more detailed to see what we can get. So as you can see, we've only got um, lows and some mids. I'm just gonna put an EQ on there so we can kind of see exactly what's going on in the spectrum. You see that nice impact there we have getting from the pitch envelope nice nice punch in the mids and we're really increasing it there as well and you can kind of feel some of these mids in the sub pack it's not just the super sub frequencies um it does go really low it goes down to i think five hertz or something like that which um is enough to make your eyes rattle in your head when you've got it really loud which is quite an interesting feeling but um yeah let's get back to the bass so i want to add a bit more to 
these harmonically basically and we're going to do that with these FM um, modulators here. You can hear some extra harmonics coming in there and it's going to be detuned from this one so I'm just going to bring it back and try and find a nice point where it kind of moves. Just take out this one and then we can hear exactly what's going on here. Let's try moving the course up to two. Here we've got a much more um, sort of rounded set of harmonics by just shifting the course up. So I'm just going to do the same kind of thing with this one, try and match them up pretty closely. Let's get that one to two and the fine. Uh, I should just bring this to one and then bring that up so it's doing the new kind of opposite of this one, it's detuning it down. And I'm just going to bring the level down into the, the multi band so it's not clipping too much. The problem is we've lost a little bit of the sub where we've added in these sort of secondary harmonics. So I'm just going to boost up the input on the multi band so that I can feel that in my back again. Still a lot of clipping there, so I'm just going to turn the output down. So you can see we've got a lot of movement, a lot of powerful bass weight and a lot of mid-range now. So it's time to, to get a bit of top end in there. And one of the plugins I really like in Ableton for that is the Erosion plugin, which is here. Uh, this is basically on the white noise mode is going to add some white noise. Let's change the width a bit. And now I'm just going to use the EQ to bring out some of the gaps in the frequencies here. Again, we're getting a bit high on the levels there, bring it down a bit to compensate. Okay, so we've got quite a nice sort of moving sound, we've got a bit of fuzz to it, it's kind of sounding pretty dirty now. Let's add a bit of saturation just to just to glue it all together, because you can never have enough saturation. So that sounds kind of good to me, you could go a bit further, maybe play with some of the bass though. Quite like using this frequency here. When you bring the depth down and the bass up a little bit, you can use the frequency as kind of a, a resonance control, which is pretty cool. Now, I often use a couple of EQs on my sounds, just uh, pre and post kind of different processing, just helps to um, sort of correct any issues that uh, any plugin might have caused, basically. Got a little bit too much here. We could probably get away with a little bit more uh, crispness on the top there. So this is sounding kind of cool now. We've got we've got all the components there for a bass. Uh, now what I'd probably do is try and add some more movement. Now there's a number of ways you could do this. Obviously filtering is a great great way to do it. I really like um, the auto filter in Ableton. It's got lovely new filter settings now. Uh, oh, it's upside down. So there we are. So band pass tends to be a good way to go for these kind of basses. Let's get some LFO on it. Now one problem we're going to find is we've basically lost a hell of a lot of gain. You can see we've dropped loads of level, lost all that energy, so let's try and grab that back and I'm going to do that with the Mighty Band Dynamics again with the probably quite famous now OTT preset. Now it's going to take a little bit of tweaking just to sort of get the, everything sitting right again. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's kind of got our energy back. Uh, it kind of sounds a bit squished and stuff, so I'm going to use some EQ just to, to add some life to some areas again. Now, at this point, I'm kind of in two minds because I kind of like how the the sub moves in and out when the bandpass filter moves up and down. And that could actually be a really effective part of how the, the sub moves within the track. But, you know, you could argue that it's quite, it's quite a lot of it taken away in a lot of points. And so it's kind of, it's kind of up to you. It's a creative decision, I think, as well as potentially a mixed decision, whether you were to perhaps group these guys up here and just create a dedicated sub chain that will allow you to just keep that sub constant. And we tried to get a little bit of dynamics in it beforehand anyway, so it shouldn't, we shouldn't be left with completely no movement, which we don't really want. Um, we should hopefully have a little bit of movement, but let's see what happens when we uh, just remove the sub from this one. So I can hear I can hear it moving quite a lot in my back, and if you're sat at home with a sub pack as well, you'll probably feel there's quite a lot of uh, sort of bounciness coming from uh, all the detuning. But it's debatable whether that's going to be more or less useful than this, which has a lot of push and pull. So. That's basically one way you can make a bass using purely Ableton plugins and obviously there's a million different ways you can do this kind of stuff but uh, here's a little patch that you guys can use to make some basses and tweak around at home. <laughs> 